Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Pipeliner CRM and Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine coming from sunny San Diego as usual. And today I'm delighted to be joined from across the country in New Hampshire by Carol Williams. How are you doing, Carol? Oh, welcome I'm back. fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for asking. The trees are so lovely this time of year. I don't know when you're going to be listening, but right now as we're recording, it's uh, middle to end of you know October, yeah. and it's all golden and beautiful, just like your name. Oh, there you go. They see flattery get you everywhere, um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, um, and so uh, what we're going to talk about today is uh, Carol, as you could see, unscatterme.com. So she is ex expert at time management and getting people out of their own way. And what we're going to talk about today is this lovely concept of bl <laughs> blissipline. <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up. Blissipline. So let's let's get into it. Like you know, when you talk about things like. Um, going from scattered to time management to working smarter? Because people hear these things like, oh, you got to work smarter, not harder. And everybody goes, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. But like, welcome to my world. Right. Uh, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> so just talk me, through, and the, talk me through how, just at a very high level, and then we'll get deeper into it, how you get to a state of discipline. Discipline. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Well, right behind me, um, if you're trying to talk about high level, we'll, we will start there. Um, yeah. So for your viewing pleasure, and I will move my head. Um, the first thing that somebody needs to do, as obvious, John, as this sounds, is they need to decide. They need to decide that they want something different. Because mm -hmm. in the in the example you yeah. gave, Oh yeah, well, welcome to my world. That person has decided that he or she doesn't matter to them because they're in a different situation. So you need to decide you want to do something different. Now, once you decide that, then you, I used to not have this step. I used to not have discern. I went right to discover. Mm -hmm. But what I realized was that discern is really important because we think we know what we want, but in going through the discover, which is the productivity success cake, um, you might want to put that in the show notes for that one because we went through, yeah. you know, the productivity success cake, like that's the tools. The discern means, are you really doing what you want to do, like deeply, you know? And, and so that's a very um, surprising process where we can get more productive, have more discipline and not throw mm -hmm. the baby out with the bath water. For example, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. But yeah. for example, yeah. I was working with a financial advisor and he's a partner in a company. And I was working on the things we usually do more done, less time, more discipline, all that jazz. Right. Mm -hmm. And we went through the di discern and he said, well, Carol, you know, I'm not changing my job. I like my job, right. you know? And I said, yeah, Absolutely. I understand that. Of course you are. Through this process, we married one of his, um, oops, something, something happened. Uh, no, we, we, ma <laughs> we married his um, passion, which was all about like recycling and composting and all of that with uh, a fine tune of his ideal client. So, mm. right. So that gave him direction. So he wasn't kind of going after just anybody as in his business development. And it, it jazzed him up because he wants to work with, with clients that have the same, you know, values as him. So it's, so it's surprising. Yeah. Okay. So that's that part. So it's decide, discern, discover, which is the productivity success, success, success cake. If I could say it would be good. And then, you know, practice and then finally celebrate. So that's an overall, an overarching. Yeah. And I think the, the most important thing, as you said at the beginning, is 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 why do you want to do it in the first place? Like, why do you want to become more uh why do you want to become more organized or more freer? Because I think at the end of the day, that's really what it is, is we're looking for more 
freedom we're not looking to we, we're not looking to be organized for the sake of being organized we're not looking to be disciplined for the sake of being disciplined we're not looking we're looking for freedom and to reduce our, our stress levels i would say you bet and once our stress levels are reduced that frees up our mind to start to dream again remember mm -hmm. when you were a little kid and you thought you could do anything and you played with you yeah. know, different. Th so there is that little kid lives in all of us. And sure, we're, you know, we've got bills to pay like the planner I just described to you. He wasn't changing his job, but you can make every day feel less like discipline and more like blissipline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but that's the thing is, I, I think, Carol, is like, uh, as you said, you discovered what his passion was. What do you say to people who are sitting there thinking like, well, I'm just doing a job. I mean, this is I have no passion for this. It's just a job. But that's not really going to I mean, ultimately, that's not really going to carry you through. Is yeah, it? well, it sure isn't. And um, well, so number one, I typically actually don't run into those folks in my work. The people mm -hmm. that I work with are probably 80% entrepreneurs or, you right. know, co-owners of businesses, or at least they're kind of upper management people who do believe they have control of their time. Um, it's unlikely that somebody would raise their hand and say, I want to be more productive if they're just kind of punching in and punching out um, individual right. contributor with a, with a problem. That's usually not mm -hmm. the folks that I run into. Right. Uh, but then even even those even with people like that, even with people who are entrepreneurs or small business people or whatever, they often feel, you know, they start something because they're passionate about it. But then after a while, they go, well, this isn't really what I expected. It's not really fulfilling me. I'm bogged down in mm. all of this stuff that I hate. Uh, this isn't kind of how I envision mm. this turning out. Right. Right. Oh, absolutely right they start they don't mind working all the hours and then they get a little burned out i was talking to a lady yesterday she was just uh she was starting on a course where i'm a um a coach on a team and she's like, i'm working 16 hours a day i'm i'm not going to the gym and you know i'm getting all burned out i'm yelling at my kids and i said wow that's really interesting how's that working for you <laughs> <laughs> you know and so it's that's an extreme example, but you're right. We can we can love our job or our pr profession too much, and then we don't have the rest of it, which is why people call it you know work life balance. So, so the answer is you know sort of like the mm, the three bears. It's kind of like in the middle, right? You start mm. out really excited. You've got to go for it. And then after a while swimming in the pool, you realize that you've got to stop splashing like this and, and start sort of doing strokes slow and steady so you can breathe in between. And then maybe mm -hmm. take a moment when you get to the other side and just rest and reflect. And that is right. the kind of thing that what we do is we set you up. So you come to me and say, okay, here's what's happening in my life, in my work. Here, I, here's what I love. Here's what I don't love. Here's what I want to do differently. And instead, and, you know, then I, then I ask you some clarifying questions regarding how mm -hmm. much you really want it, because that's what we, we uncover. That's where the coaching starts before. I leave right. and, you know, and we uncover, like, what does it really mean to you? Like, why do you really want this? And sometimes you don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then we either move the, the needle to somewhere else, or you just don't do the thing. You just don't engage with me mm -hmm. and that's okay. So the worst that can happen is you say, yep, I want that. You're kind of, you've got one foot in one foot out or, or something, and you pay good money. You're not really ready. So therefore you don't do the work and then you do the, so that that's why I have this committed thing right at the beginning. Yeah, and and I think that's so super important. It's like that old joke. It's like, you know, how many how many uh, therapists does it take to change a light bulb? Like none, because the light bulb has to want to change. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> and to your point is is like people. 
because oftentimes, I mean, our, our lives are littered with changes we were we really wanted to make, but when we actually got into them, we didn't have the commitment to do mm. it. And I think, and I think part of it, when it comes to business, I think sometimes it's hard to it's hard to in, it, for them to see a future, a different future state. Absolutely, you 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 couldn't be more correct. And what we can see is what hasn't worked. So mm-hmm. when it comes to that moment of, and I, I, what I do is I, I have people rate their desired future on a one right. to 10. And if it's anything less than an eight or, a, you know, certainly a seven, I just send them on their way. But if it's, if it's a seven or an eight, we, we start unpeeling. Well, what would it take to get you to a 10 out of 10? And we keep talking about, well, I failed before. This has happened before. And all the brain knows is what's happened before. That's the right. only evidence we have. We haven't gotten there. So the safe thing to do is to not do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah. is it though? No. Right, right, right. I mean, because, I mean, let's face it, because we don't, if we decide not to do something, it's not like everything stands still. No. Right. right. And and the more the more the more chaotic things are, the more chaotic they become. Right. It's a, it's it, it builds upon itself. It's not like, well, I can deal with the chaos that's here right now. Not really commit. I, I don't really want to go and make the changes. It's not like that chaos will stay static. Right. 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 But it does take a very big step out of our comfort zone mm-hmm. in order to make a change. I, mm-hmm. I had somebody book in on my calendar that I don't know where they found me. Uh, it was for Friday and they booked in beginning of the month. I thought, oh, that's cool. I'll see what see what it is. And this person um, is a director of a company. This person has children and was getting really burned out. It's a new job and it's just a lot of responsibilities and mm-hmm. prioritization and that kind of thing is what this person wanted. And then just today... I got this uh, email saying, you know what, I really can't make that meeting uh, because I have too many family obligations. And I'm thinking to myself, got it. So what you asked me for was help with all of this stuff going on because of your family obligations and your, you know, so you've got your children, your full time work, challenges, all sorts. And now you can't make it because of that. And probably what's really happening is this person's going, oh my gosh, if I meet with this woman, I might want to work with her. And if I want to work with her, then that means I've got to do something different. And if I do something different, then I won't get to stay where I am. And even though I don't like it, I definitely don't want to do something different because that's the unknown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you know what you've outlined there, Carol, as I always think is a fascinating thing because people always talk about fear of failure and you go, yeah, sure, fear of failure exists. But I always think the thing that holds people back as much, if not more, is the fear of success. And in reality, it's the fear of change. And it's like, yeah, OK, if I do this, then I'm go- then I may have to change this. This might change. That might change. And and it's all to an outsider, it all sounds positive, but to you, it sounds kind of frightening. Well, it, well, it is because we are run by the reptilian part of our brain, right? So mm-hmm. generally, as you probably know, we have like the thinking part and then we have the, the reptilian, the feeling part, the feminine right. part. And we're mm-hmm. actually ruled back here, which is, which is why sometimes we'll do something uh, by intuition or uh, it's why I like to use the, the thing like that's why we don't have to think about think about how to have our babies as women. Right. We just, right. you know, it just happens. <laughs> so the, the, the reptilian part, that's the primitive part. That's what keeps us safe. Like the thing is, don't die. Right. And so if you're doing something else and if you're doing something else, too much of something else all at once, um, you could die. That's why people have existential crises when they're trying Mm -hmm. to do too much change all at once, which is, of course, why, you know, I've got steps here. It's not. Listen, you're going to have the whole cake and a stomach ache. You know, you're going to do all the habits all at once and you're going to decide what you're going to do differently in a day and a half and you're going to you're going to eat the whole cake and then you know by the end of next week it's all going to be different. Well, no, because that's a recipe for disaster. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. And and I think that's the other thing, too, is like the, ex, you know, setting the correct expectations, because here's the other thing we're bumping up against now. We live in a very uh, instant world. We expect instant gratification. We expect it. We expect there to be an easy button for everything. Yeah. Um, a lot of people probably don't even remember the easy button because <laughs> the company I don't even think exists anymore. Um, but but the point being is, is we still have to have realistic expectations and that's getting tougher because we, we we're losing the patience yeah yeah we really do do you want to talk about discipline yes okay, please great so this was a um a, a term that i learned from one of the women in my cohort uh, in the spring and many and so women and men what i find are oftentimes how they think about productivity and organization is is slightly different Oftentimes mm -hmm. men will say, um, I just need to be disciplined. And oftentimes they're right. It really does work well for them. And then the women will say, I need that. But then what will happen is there will be this should. Now, these, this is not universally true. Of course, it's non-binary. There's all sorts mm -hmm. of folks in the world. So nothing is true for everybody. I'm just saying generally. Um, so it's for the women, especially, what we want is we want bliss. We want happiness in our lives. We want harmony, right? So if we want harmony and we want bliss and we want people to kind of all dance together around the fire and eat the meat together, kind of, you know, hunter gatherers type of thing, yeah. then if we have discipline, it means that we are not pushing and doing like I had, like we are creating something that feels good to us it gives us bliss and mm -hmm. we tell that to ourselves so we say yeah all right i guess i really do have to make three more client potential client calls i don't really want to i'm out of my comfort zone um but i really do need to follow up with them because they expressed interest this is a sales podcast right so you yep. know and all right ultimately that's going to get me my bliss because, you know, I've got these sales targets to meet and my kids mm -hmm. are hungry, that kind of thing. So that's the discipline in it. The other part of discipline is um, like eating dessert first. A lot of the people that I work with, I mentioned in the last podcast, are neurodiverse, ADHD mm -hmm. and so on. And one little known fact about, about those that population is that it's opposite to the traditional concept of work really hard and then get your reward. It's, right. um, it's more like pick your reward first, maybe even have your dessert first, because that's going to give you happiness and dopamine and bliss. And through that happiness, now you're motivated to do more. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that is the th that, that that is really interesting, and and it's like flipping. It's like just flipping your perspective, isn't it? Completely, it's like you know the and and it's setting you it's setting you up for the real reward, as you said. You know, the ability to be eat eat dessert for breakfast. Why don't you? <laughs> uh, that's what you want to do? I don't recommend it, but if that's what you want to do. Yeah. That's a brief bliss, but it's kind of flipping that switch, isn't it? To looking, and it, it's all about kind of the way you're looking at it, and the and uh, the uh, and how it's making you feel. Yeah, yeah. So much of my work is to help people live into their future as if it's today, mm -hmm. right. and that's how I help people get motivated because there's that gap between intention and action. So mm -hmm. there's kind of two bits to that. One would be to really get our mind into that future state that we then describe ourselves that way. I'm an organized right. person who shows up on time, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And mm -hmm. then the habits, which are one step at a time. Okay. I'm going to set my alarm 15 minutes early, whatever those, it, and that's kind of trite and boring, but in the end, that is how change happens. Yeah. 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 And it is. And it's funny because the change change uh, is very momentum driven, I believe. Yes. And therefore, it's those little things, the accumulative effect of little things, you start to create some momentum. I think that's the problem. A lot of times people set their goals. They say big goal and great. Have the biggest goal you want. That's fine. Yeah. 
but realize that it's baby steps to get you there and don't give up and not sort of think, oh, well, I've only progressed this far, therefore I should just give up on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, you know, that kind of incrementalism, we've, we've, that's hard for people sometimes. It sure is because it means that you have to, you know, kind of do the work and it, and it's <laughs> right. So what I, what yeah. I do sometimes, especially in my groups is I pair people up and, um, and create that. But then I also create games like gamifying things, mm -hmm. especially with my ADHDers, right. people love games. So right now, um, I've just started about a week ago, I started this game in uh, the group I'm running, Discover Your Greatness, that through the Productivity Success Cake, that's this one, okay? Um, and right. what we're doing is we're seeing who can fill in um, their morning form and their evening form the most times, weekdays, non-holidays between now and when the course ends, which is December 12th. And the person mm. who gets the highest number will win a prize and what i do is i pick the prize based on the person i get to know them and um i just i probably will pick like a week before maybe five right. days before so that i have you know time to get it to get it like sent and so on but i've mm -hmm. done everything from um you know gift certificates for dinners out massages i'm trying to think uh, what I did, but, you know, various things that I just get to know the folks and right, that's what right, I right. did, you know, so. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's great uh, because I mean, what you just said, said there as well is even that kind of buddy system or role modeling or something, you know, that that's really, it's much harder. It's, it's very hard to do something on your own. It's much better if you're, if somebody is holding you accountable, either you as the coach or your buddy doing it. And, and I think, uh, Listen, the world could the world could benefit from a lot more people looking at how people behave and role models as opposed to listening to what people say. Right. Well, there's three success principles when we 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 do get to that point of a 10 out of 10 and I want something different. You want to have a system, you know, and just go around willy nilly, some sort of system. You want to have, as you say, a group, an accountability buddy or a group is even better. And I like to say you want to have a leader or a coach. And so that's mm -hmm. why yeah. I provide all three in the services that I provide. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I, as I said, I'm a big believer in coaching. Mm -hmm. I, I say this ad nauseum on this podcast that you probably spend, you probably spend a lot of money on your hobbies. If you're into, if you play tennis or golf, or whatever, you know, you probably hire a golf coach or tennis coach or whatever. How often do you, how much money do you invest in what puts bread on your table? Mm -hmm. Yep. So go out, get set professional coach. Listen, Carol, as always, this has been fantastic. All of Carol's information is going to be below this video, but please do tell people a little bit more about Unscatter Me and the work you yeah, do. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you know those people that are all over the place, especially entrepreneurs. They're doing this and they're doing that, but they're not making the money and they're not making the impact that they really want to in the world. Well, through my coaching, I help them go from scattered and stuck to focused and confident. Mm -hmm. And so that may mean they have a lot more sales. They, that may mean they can finally sit down and have dinner with their family, or it may mean both. And so hop right. on to unscatterme.com and you can get your own guide um, there when you do the free download. Excellent. Uh, I would encourage you to go ahead. Again, it's unscatterme.com. All the information will be below the video anyway. Uh, thanks again, Carol. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you.